My biggest takeaway from music concepts is the relationship and collaboration between music and dance. Dancing is truly the most natural outcome of music. When we hear a song, we automatically feel an emotion and we start to move and reflect the song playing based on the emotions we feel. As humans, we also find ourselves tapping along to the beat of the music. This shows how naturally connected the two forms of the arts are, whether you are a trained dancer or not. For a trained dancer, musicality is the connection between dance and rhythm. And as for styles, tap and jazz are the most known percussive styles of dance. They both originate in early America around the 1700s by enslaved African Americans as a way to express themselves and retain cultural identities. Music and dance also connect on an even deeper level. Instead of just displaying emotions for a choreographed piece, the choreographer can play with the rhythm, dynamics, and qualities that are presented in the music and displayed on the dancers. This is seen so beautifully in the collaboration between Duke Ellington and Alvin Ailey to create Night Creature. Both understood music and rhythm, which allowed them to execute a very successful musical piece. Dancers play an important role in this relationship, as they are vessels for the music to show the nuances that aren't able to be heard without the connection of the dancing. But music is just as important because it provides a driving force, a pulse, and an overall structure. The relationship between music and dance is a dependent one. Dance and music are always interacting and complementing each other. Whether the music and dance are of equal importance, or the music acts as an ambiance, or the music is the main focus and the dance is just supporting, the music and the movement of a piece are always intentional and are meant to enhance one another. Lastly, we are all born with an innate sense of rhythm, and the connection between dance and music show that. As Maya Angelou said, everything in the universe has a rhythm. Everything dances. My biggest takeaway from music concepts is learning about the listening modes. Before this class, I unconsciously used forms of listening modes when listening to pieces of music. Now, after learning about what they are, it's interesting to recognize when I use them. I also enjoy how changing the listening mode I use affects how I feel for a piece. Initially hearing this, I listened in on an emotional level. I felt anxious and sad due to the words of the poems, along with the key of the instruments and the soprano singer. During my second time listening, I listened in on a technical level. I had already enjoyed listening to the piece, but changing the mode of listening made it even better. It allowed me to be further amazed by the performance of the soprano and the ensemble. I appreciate learning about listening modes because it provides a different perspective when hearing a piece of music. Hi, I'm going to talk about my takeaway from this class and it's the time signature. I think it's really important as a dancer to know these kind of concepts because we work every day with music. every morning we have music and in the future if i want to be a teacher i have to know these concepts so i can know what to ask for my to my pianist so we can be at the same page so now i'm going to put some examples so we can um, talk about the time signature and discover what's the time signature of every piece that i'm going to play so here is the first one this music is a triple. It means that there's three bits in a measure and a quarter note gets one beat. Let's listen again and count. the next 
next one. This was a 6 8. It means that there are 6 beats in the measure and an 8 note gets one beat. Let's listen again and count. Stop you crying, it's a sign of the times Welcome to the final show I hope you're wearing your best clothes You can't bribe the door on your way to the sky You look pretty good down here But you ain't really good Alexa, play Sign of the Times by Harry Styles. Sign of the Times by Harry Styles from Spotify. we've been in hard times and it's not going to be the last the song is about how we can go through hard times and we must push through and conquer new beginnings a lot of people use music as a release there's a song that exists for everyone to relate to no matter what mood you're feeling the message in the song is that everything is going to be okay even though it doesn't feel like it right now and a lot of people need to hear that during these difficult times
Dynamics are one of the expressive elements of music. They represent the control of the volume in a piece. There are different types of dynamic markings. They go from pianissimo, which means very, very quiet, and fortissimo, which means very, very loud. And the gradual changes in the volume are called crescendo, increasing or growing, decrescendo, decreasing, and diminuendo, diminishing. You could also add molto, poco, or subito, which means much, little, or suddenly, to those changes to express how fast or slow the changes are supposed to happen. However, dynamic markings still require interpretation by the performer depending on the musical context. So for example, a piano marking in one part of the piece can have a very different interpretation in another. So music is not only about rules and practice, it is so much more than that. The dynamics will never cease to surprise us. A small step further in terms of dynamics is equivalent to the discovery of a new color as shown by the musical field. With foundation led in 1600 with the advent of classical baroque music, its evolution hasn't been interrupted yet. Music was able to excite us and accompany the lives of all of us by coloring them, like in a painting. Every single piece composed has undergone changes, personal interpretations, attribution of specific meanings, emotional or critical transfer, as well as an inspiration to innovate in such a way as to never allow it to behold. Being static is not part of the human being, to the point that the composers themselves continually readjust the dynamics of the single note, which very often was defined as a war in a speech of another thousand each with its own intonation, touching the much-coveted perfection. Whatever we are talking about, opera, pop, dance, jazz, we inevitably talk about a revolution, sometimes peaceful and sometimes noisy, which is a loud expression of countless characters who have gone down in history or not, who have scandalized entire generations by becoming other masters. After taking music this year, I realized how important music is to have as a dancer. And so I wanted to show how different music dynamics um, translate into different dancers' dynamics. So the same music with the same dance moves, just different dynamics within the music and the dancing. First we have the phrase. Then we'll start adding in the music dynamics. Starting with piano. Next we have forte. We can already see the different dynamics with thin piano and forte with the music and dancing. Let's take a look at more extreme dynamics. And now the exact opposite. To most people listening to music might not even notice these little slight changes in dynamics at all, but for a dancer it means everything. After this class, I feel so much more knowledgeable about the different dynamics within music and being able to put it into my body, into my dancing. Hi, my name is Alexander Marmolejos, and this is my second year of the Geoffrey Ballet School. Next, I will do a small solo of one of the composer mentioned in the class by the teacher, Mr. Bruce. The composer I will choose is Frederick Chopin. He was a teacher, Polish composer, and virtuoso pianist. Consider 
one of the most important in the history and one of the greatest representatives of the New Zealand Romanticism. And this is my little phrase and I hope you guys enjoy this beautiful music and this connection with the movement and like the feeling of make something with really good music and really good composer. Thank you for watch this and I hope you enjoy this little phrase I do with all my love. Major and minor keys. There are endless resources available that can explain every nook that separates a major key from a minor one. To make the experience easier, here are two simple ways to tell the difference between a major and a minor key. Major keys have a bright, happy and cheerful sound, while minor keys sound more melancholic and sad. Here are a couple of examples. and minor keys are defined by their tonic note, also known as a bass note. On the piano keyboard, the distance between a white key and a black key is a half step. The distance between a white key and another white key is a whole step, except for B and C and E and F, which are just half steps. The distance between a black key and another black key is a whole step. With these whole and half steps, we can make major and minor scales. All major scales share the same pattern. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. For example, an A major scale would be a, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. 
minor scales follow a similar structure whole half whole whole half whole whole here an a, an a minor scale would be a b c d e f g a Do you need a teacher ballet class? One thing you need to learn how to do is communicate with the musicians. An important part of each combination is the time signature of the music. For plies, a 3-4 time signature, please. Next up, tondus in 4-4. Four, four. We will use a 2-4 for jeté. Jean in three four. A six eight march for the frappe company. Adagio in 4-4. Four, four. Now you have one of the tools needed to teach a ballet class. Thanks for watching. Hi, dancers and dance teachers. My name is Luca Sackers. I'm a ballet trainee at the Joffrey Ballet School, and I have some questions for you. Have you ever been in a ballet class and when the teacher tells the pianist what time signature to play something in, you have absolutely no idea what they're talking about? Do the words three, four and six, eight kind of just sound made up to you? Are you relatively confident in your teaching abilities, but panic every time you have to talk to the pianist because you don't know how to communicate to them what you would like them to play? Do you look at sheet music and wonder how anyone understands what all those lines and dots mean? Do the words mezzo forte and andante just sound like Italian designer bags to you? If any of those apply to you, do not despair, there is a solution. Music class with Mr. Bruce Lazarus. In this class, you'll learn all about time signatures, tempo markings, dynamics, etc. Learning this will mean that you'll finally be able to confidently talk to a pianist and sheet music will actually start making sense to you. Who knew that could be possible? I sure didn't. This is a judgment-free environment where questions are welcome, so if you're finally ready to learn more about music theory, then this is the class for you. I hope to see you there. Side effects of taking this class will likely include an increased appreciation of different types of music, connecting to music in ways you had never thought of, thanks to the listening modes that are also taught in the class, and an increased awareness of how visual art and music are connected. Historical movements and culture have oftentimes heavily influenced music. For example, the song Stonewall Nation by Madeline Davis is based on the Stonewall Riots, which was a series of demonstrations and a huge milestone in the LGBT plus movement.
The Stonewall Inn in the Greenwich Village neighborhood of Manhattan, New York City, was owned by the Mafia, a popular secret organization among the poorest and most marginalized people in the gay community. Back in the 60s, people couldn't be open about who they were. It was illegal to hold hands or any public effect kind between people of the same sex. So the inn was constantly being raided violently by the police. And during a raid in the early mornings of June 28, 1969, people decided to fight back. Their response was the Stonewall Movement, a series of political anti-repression uprising by the members of the LGBTQ community to the anti-gay legal system, which included the demanding of a government action upon the HIV epidemic. Stonewall Nation is an early gay liberation song by LGBT plus rights activist Madeline Davis after the Stonewall riots in 1969. The song preaches for freedom for the LGBT plus community. The song told the whole world that they were not going to take another day of this treatment for their kind. One of the verses from their song strongly reflects their beliefs. Their loving called sin, no more, no more, no more. We're going to be ourselves and love it. The Stonewall Nation is going to be free. The Stonewall Nation was a protest. But Madeline Davis shed light on the vision for LGBT plus community, and it is clearly seen in her lyrics. Today, over 50 years after the Stonewall riots, we as a society have come a long way in accepting the LGBT plus community. All over the world, people march for pride every year, which at its core is still a protest. It is still a fight for equality and acceptance. But fortunately, it has become more of a celebration than anything else. Songs are still influenced by this movement, many of which are very popular. For example, Burn This Way by Lady Gaga. Born This Way by Lady Gaga is a song about not being ashamed of who you are, regardless of what you look like or who you choose to love. Everyone should be accepted no matter what. A different lover is not a sin, believe capital H-I-N, hey, 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 born this way, lyrics by Lady Gaga. Historical movements and culture have influenced music and also have created music. Those are called protest songs and they become a timeless anthem of the according movement that are sung in protest still nowadays by the community. It's a way of remembering history and a way of forging new futures as well. As the years pass by, new pop songs are added at this repertory of brightness and the music connects once to each other in the journey of human rights. During this course, one of my biggest takeaways was how music can affect people differently. And in this song in particular, I felt very drawn to dance and choreograph to this piece of music. And I showed that in some prop. listening that I chose to encapsulate in my portion of this project was technique. Um, when listening to this song, it is very clear to me that there are many, many different layers of sound that are being created by both hands at the piano while playing, which takes incredible technique to do properly. And so in my improv, I really wanted to highlight the technique of the player and bring it into my movement as a dancer.
decided to go with was emotion. During my improv, I really tried to embody how the music was making me feel internally. While improving to the music, I felt like doing constant movement was the way to go because of the way the piano is in Love Dreams. It is very constant and beautiful and flowy, and I just really wanted to embody that in my improv. As humans, we are constantly listening, moving, and creating through space. Sound and movement have been influencing one another for centuries. One cannot simply exist without the other. When we strip down the layers inside music, we hear what seems to be a bunch of instruments making noise. As dancers and humans, we can create noise with our bodies, just like musicians create noise with instruments. Dancer or not, humans all can connect through music, emotion, and experience. We all have a body and are affected by music in a personal way, more than many realize. This clip is another representation of how movement can relate to a song in a different way. Similar to Night Creature, the collaboration of Al Alvin Ailey and Duke Ellington, this clip looks at the music from an unexpected perspective. Like we see in The Rite of Spring by Martha Graham, Overlapping percussion with music, sounds can become a part of movement. Our bodies can be seen as our unique moldable instruments in which we inevitably use in relation to music. These are just a few ways that music and movement can relate. Not only do we see this in dance, but in art as well. Essentially, music creates dance in the same way that dance can create music. As we have discovered, music and dance are innately intertwined. They inform, complement, and influence one another, but perhaps most profoundly, they are both products of one humanity. In other words, they are not confined to any one nation or group of people, but are collective forces that can be created and felt by all humans. And just like language, they are forms of communication and expression in their own right. With this knowledge of the natural interdisciplinary nature of music and dance, let's now take a look at the magic that can happen when individual musicians and dancers collaborate on a more personal scale. Perhaps the most basic example of this is the live accompaniment of musicians during a dance class.
It is true, of course, that in a ballet class, for example, the dancers aim to match the speed, quality, and dynamics of their movement with the sound of the live music. This might be obvious, but what is not so obvious is the attention that the musician pays to the dancers, and the extent to which the dancer's movement informs the musician on how to play. Now, let's look beyond the classroom to the realm of choreography and composition. One example of dance being born out of music can be seen in choreographer Crystal Pite's works. Let's listen to how Pite is inspired by music when creating a choreographic work. The music, the way I see it visually, is it's a little bit like a, like a palindrome, where it starts very minimally and then builds in terms of complexity and intensity and volume up to this high point about here in the middle. And then it drops out and you connect with this lone soprano, yeah. and she's singing a lament. And it feels like the whole piece, Goretzky's piece, but I'm also oh, trying to do the same thing in the choreography, mm -hmm. that the whole piece kind of zooms in at that. It is true that many dance choreographers work this way and are inspired by music, but Pite does well to describe the way in which she translates the ebbs, flows, nuances, and events that she hears in the music into movement. In the final analysis, there's no denying that, as powerful as music and dance are individually, their collaboration holds endless potential for artistic innovation. It is eye-opening to understand the inevitability of music's influence on dance and vice versa. The fact that their interplay takes place so organically that they both hold the ability to be the catalysts and also the products of the other. To me, this is what makes them so beautiful. We interpret the arts based on our own experiences and our own emotions. We can all hear the same piece of music and have a completely different response. We could have an emotional response or maybe it takes you back to a certain memory or maybe you're like, oh, is that a trumpet way back there? I like that. And it's just our own experience and our own journey when we hear that piece of music. <laughs>
Art is supposed to make us feel something. It's supposed to get us talking and get us thinking. These raw human responses is exactly what the art is supposed to do. One of my biggest takeaways from this class is knowing that we interpret the arts based on our own perspectives. That there is no wrong answer. There are many right answers. And that the possibilities are, well, endless. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ella Foster. I am a Jazz and Contemporary Year 2, and for my Music Concepts Final, I will be improving to three different tempos. The first one I'm going to show you is a slow tempo. The next video is a medium tempo. My last video is a fast tempo. Just cause I don't make a thing about it Don't mean that I'll never think about it Cause I do Just cause I learned how to live without you Don't mean that I ever really wanted to mm -hmm. I'm Thanks for watching!